welcome back to the spider's web and as you can see on the table in front of us we have six of our enforcers um, army for dead zone and with these I've done them as well much as I can um, as you can see I'll show you this one because it's the easiest one to show you it's all the main armor is blue and the extra armoured plating is white um, everything else is just painted black with a dry brush of um, iron breaker and the blue areas started off with a brush over with the fang and I did the white and I painted white over the areas that I wanted white. I then painted the metal areas black. After that, I went over with Drakenhof Nightshade. So, so far, the colors we've used are the Fang, White Scar, that's for the armor, Black from the metal parts. A wash of Drakenhof Nightshade. When that's dry, what I did then was highlighted the black, oh sorry, sorry the blue with Altdorf Guard Blue. And while that was drying, I mixed a white scar with Runefang Steel to make like a palely grey, very pale grey, metallic looking uh, paint and then I went over all the areas on the flat areas with that you can see a little bit of the I hope you can see a little bit there okay so that's that part done then I took Sotec Green and added that over the blue to give the extreme highlights as you might be able to just see there a few little dabs here and there once that paint had dried I then went over the white parts with white scar again just certain areas just as an extreme highlight And then with the where are we? With the iron breaker, I went over the guns, dry brushed over the guns, as you can see, and all the metal areas on the um, on the model. The belt around the armor I did in uh, the whoops I highlighted with administratum grey. So I dry brushed over the guns with the iron breaker and then in certain parts of the guns I used Wazdaka Red just to go over that. That's what I've used, that's how I've done it. And then again the base, the same as I did with the Plague, painted black, dry brushed over with Dawnstone, dry brushed over with uh, Administratum Grey. Then I glued the stones on because I forgot um, to go over the... Uh, bases with the dark earth so I could see some of the rings after I paint it you can see a little bit the I may but I'm not going to be bothering going over that um, I think you can see a little bit there yeah just the that little line there um, I may add another stone to there I don't know yet but most time will tell if it gets noticed when people are looking at it on might do it but chances are they won't. So then I painted the stones in exactly the same way as the base and then I did a wash over with null oil. Okay so that's the principle let's go into practice because as I said we have models here that I want that I still have to paint. I have this fella I have the sniper I have the engineer 
who is accompanied by these two um, sentry guns. I still have to undercoat these and prime them and clean them up a little bit because I forgot to do those. So I'm going to leave him for a bit until they're done and I can do these together. Oh, and I have a big beefy chap with the sergeant that uh, can be done as well. I'm going to save him till last, as always. Um, I have tried to clean up this, but for some strange reason, couldn't get the entire line out of it, so I'm just going to keep going at it. Fingers crossed I can clean that up enough. But anyway, what I'm going to do first is, as it's the one that's fully assembled, I'm going to do this man here. Okay. So, where's my, there it is. Let's get on with it, shall we? So first of all, we use other fang. And we're going over all the, the main body areas of this. We're not touching, or we're trying not to touch the areas that we want white. And just to say that, I go over one of the parts that's going to be white. <laughs> oh dear. So we're getting all the blue stuff here done now. Um, as you can see, I'm not being very careful with where I'm putting the blue on, on the helmet because it's going to be gone over with white and uh, there's a little bit of detail there so that's uh, going to be difficult enough trying to uh, get, get into because the moulding is not brilliant on these models unfortunately. Unfortunately, I've got hiccups again. On the way through painting that, I've had an itchy nose. The itchy nose has decided to go near enough, and it's left me with hiccups. It's not nice. <laughs> oh dear. Oh. I went to the tip only this afternoon. I took some rubbish and came out of there, and I've been sneezing for about three hours after it. Not nice, not nice at all. Anyway, enough. Right, so that's the blue parts done. Now we're going on to the white parts. So we're just going over all the areas that are going to be white. It's just a basic coverage. We don't really want um, we don't really want it spot on. It's just something for the uh, Drakenhof nightshade to cover and uh, tint. So we're not really looking for spot on coverage as I say.
so that's the white area gone over as well as some of the blue area and the black area that should be white <laughs> sorry as well as some of the blue area and the black area that shouldn't be white not and should be white okay so that's that done I'm going to change to a finer detail brush now and go back to the fang um, I say it's just touching up some areas that need to be um, abreast which is this part of his helmet See my hand is shaking. I'm quite bad today. So I'm just going to go onto here. I hope I can get my brush at a fine enough point to be able to get back into that area. Also need to go into that area. There you go. Let's say it's, it's all, as it were, trial and error. Sometimes with some of these, trying to find out. Um, exactly where certain colours should be going um, and making sure that the right colour goes into the right place but once you've got it sorted, once you've got an idea of what you're doing it's, it's easy to do the hard part is trying to build up your skill at this and even then it's not hard, it's just time consuming it's, it's a lot of practice like anything else, if it's worth doing, it's worth doing as well as you can do it. And mm. you know I mean, I mean, I don't go into it uh, to any great depth because that's not what I need for my models. I just want them looking good on the tabletop, as I've said before. They're going to be handled, they're going to be thrown around, knocked about, bashed. No point in doing a spot on job with them. Get them to as good a level as you need to get them to. If you want to go further, fine, I'll be, you know. That's entirely up to you. But, as I say, if you do a spot on job for a gaming figure, and then you start getting a bit, or you run the risk of start getting a bit uh, overly sensitive when you, your models start getting uh, used in game a little too heavy handed, shall we say. Um, so there's not really much point in going over the top, is there? <laughs> Okay, so we're now going to switch into Abaddon Black, and that's going to be for the metal areas. I'm just going to try and find out what I've done with brush and knock it off. Yeah, found it. Okay. And everywhere that's going to be metal is going to be going over, going to be gone over with black.
going to go over that I ocular device there. This is the character I'm going to be using as the little or the uh, cheaper of the two surgeons. The description isn't perfect for this model, but uh, we didn't get another option for that one. Okay, so that's the black done. There should be no more of that to be done now, because the next time we come to the model to do go over the black, it's going to be with the um, iron breaker, the dry brushing over. So. So there's no point in um, going any further with that, but as I said there's a couple of places I need to go over with the white before I do the uh, wash, which is this part of his hand, which I've missed. There's part of his um, though that I've missed, and I went over... this part with the black which I shouldn't have done there we are, so that is it the preparation for this model once it's all dried which won't take too long we'll give it a wash over with the Drakenhof Nightshade so it shouldn't take too long for it to dry, it's not um, I've got a lot of paint on there, so while we're doing waiting for that to dry I'll fasten that, I'll give the Drakenhof Nightshade a bit of a shake by the sound of that I think I may need to get some more of this we're getting a little bit low and Let's see, still have the sword um, a little damp, but we can make a start on the the base and do his feet first. As you can see, it gives a nice bluish cast to the white, which is ideal for shadowy areas for white. It also adds that little bit of darkness to the shadows in the uh, in the blue areas as well. It's probably the ideal colour to use as a wash for this colour scheme. I've got the dropsies today. So we have, I say, good wash with the Drakenhof Nightshade. As I said, this is just my colour scheme that I have chosen. I don't really particularly want you to copy mine. I would sooner you go out and do your own version. If, however, you don't feel confident enough to do that and you just want to copy somebody else's, which I know is can be much better, to be honest, for first time painters, then, you know, feel free. But, as I said, I really would prefer if you make your own colours do your own versions because it's, it's the your models do them how you want to do them you know it's it's not for me it's you know I don't think it's um, my personal view on it is I've bought the models 
and I'm not copying anybody else's ideas. I want them to be mine. I want them to look like. I want them to look like, not how somebody else has done theirs. But as I say, it's entirely up to you. It's your level of confidence with painting. As I say, if you're a brand new painter, never picked up a brush before, and just decided you want to do them, then fine. Feel free to copy my ideas. But as I say, it's much better if you take the theory that I'm showing you and running with it and doing your own colour scheme. I mean, there's nothing stopping you. Do I mean, look at the, looking at the model here. There's nothing stopping you doing these as uh, like Iron, in Iron Man colours. You know, the red and gold. Really, is the all said and done. I've gone for a red, red, white, and blue colour scheme with mine. There's a little, there's one model here that I've not got any red on, which I'm going to um, rectify in a bit. But as you can see, I've got his. In fact, I'm going to put them with a yellow tip. I think because they're the missiles. No red, not a yellow tip, a red tip. Um, while we're waiting for that to dry, with nothing else to do. With the Wasdaka Red. Just go all the way over them. Once it's dry, we can go over with a wash to separate them all again. That's no big deal. So we've got the all the red on the this gun, however, hasn't got any red on. And I think really to fit in with all the others, it's going to get some, even if it's just a little bit of red. I don't know what you're whinging for. You've been out for over an hour. Shut up. There's a little area there that I really wanted left, um, but never mind, that's that done. Um, I don't think there's any other area that I want to do as red, but we just want to have a little bit of red, white and blue on each one. Okay, so there's the first stage of this one done. Uh, when the um, when the wash is dried, we'll come back to it and do the highlights. Take the highlights done on the dry brush and everything, and uh, then we can show you how I base these. So until next time, as always, take care, God bless, and bye for now. <laughs>